Good afternoon. Um, kind of going back to uh, Saturday, you know, reviewing the, the film, I really thought we had a good week of preparation. Um, and talking to the leaders and the, and the captains yesterday, um, they thought that as well. I, obviously, there's always a few things that you wish you could do a little bit better Monday through Friday. But uh, uh, the bottom line was we didn't execute well enough. Uh, it really in all three phases, and you know, you start with the with the defense. We played really good at times on, on defense. Um, in that game, we needed to play great. Um, you're going to get into low scoring games. You're going to get into high scoring games, and you've got to find a way to to stop them at a critical time. And uh, they beat us on explosive plays, and uh, unfortunately for us, some of their explosive plays were on their t uh, scoring drives. And so, a little bit of that was probably uh, our inability to. Uh, uh, to tackle a few times and, and lose the cup, as well as um, uh, their quarterback made some big time plays and, and give him credit. Um, offensively, it's pretty simple. We just we didn't execute on, on third and fourth down. Uh, we had plays there, and um, whether it was a missed block, whether it was a, a misread, um, uh, just not seeing whatever it was, the field, not seeing. Um, where the defenders were, uh, what the pre-snap look was, and all of a sudden it changed post-snap. We um, didn't execute, and you can't, you're not going to win any games going what we did on third and fourth down. And then probably the area that we need to excel the most in is special teams. And uh, I think we've got uh, really good punt and kick returners. We didn't give them an opportunity. And so um, part of that is them doing a good job of kicking it out of the end zone and um, us doing a better job of winning uh, at the line of scrimmage on punt return to give Philip a chance, and, and we didn't do those things. So uh, that phase, we have to win, and, and I appreciate our guys. Um, yesterday, uh, if you'd ask our, our key special teams guys, they would have said, Coach, we lost that phase because we typically win that phase. So an even, an even matchup is a loss for us. And so those are the things that we need to shore up this week. Uh, it uh, is not panic time um, because we're only three games into it, but we know it's a, it's a time for us that we have to improve in, in all areas. And so I'm excited to see how the guys respond to adversity. We talked about the adversity that we're facing and, and uh, have faced it before, um, and uh, these guys need to attack it. So um, we've got the right leadership, we've got the right guys in the locker room to, to get it done. We just got to get better and continue to improve. What was it that Tulane did defensively that kind of kept you guys bottled up? The biggest thing they did um, physically is they tackled really well. Um, Deuce didn't have those breakaway runs that, that we had uh, uh, been accustomed to. Part of that is really good tackling, and part of that is us not sustaining blocks. Um, and then we had some guys open, and we just didn't see them. You know, we, we've got to go through our progressions um, a little bit more um, and be patient with our progressions because some guys came open late. A couple times guys came open late and there was somebody in our face and other times guys came open late and we maybe just didn't see them. And we've got to uh, um, probably be less conservative and be more aggressive. Um, and uh, that's something we've got to keep pushing for. That's my next question. Uh, at Nebraska, Adrian was known as a playmaker he made a lot of big mm -hmm. plays and with that came mistakes and turnovers we all know that has he swung back too far though being too careful at this point? yeah I, I would say without question fits and and uh, uh ck and i had a long meeting and, and visited with uh adrian about it and he would agree that um he's got to cut it loose and rip it and uh um if a mistake's made a mistake's made but uh be aggressive in 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 uh in what you see and what you believe and uh I, We've seen that in uh, in fall camp, and now we've just got to see it uh, on a Saturday. And uh, I know it's there. I know uh, that uh, he can do it. He doesn't want to make the mistake. I think we all know that. I think nobody wants to make the mistakes. Um, but there's times where um, you just got to let it rip, and if, if something happens um, uh, that's a, a negative play, we got to bounce back from it and, and get a stop on defense or, shoot, we're going to make some positive plays too. Just alter your approach to how you're handling the quarterbacks, and if he goes through the first not, half and does the same thing. Yeah, not 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 right now. Um, you know, that's a better question probably for Colin right now. But um, we, we still feel comfortable about that room. You know, we have talented players in that room. You know, uh, between Will and, and uh, a young player in Jake Rubley, we feel confident in that room. And so, um, you know, we'll continue to distribute those reps. How has Adrian kind of bounced back since Saturday? 
Um, well, I had my normal meeting with he and the QBs yesterday talking um, some of the things Oklahoma does defensively and, and them picking my brain and me picking their brain about uh, looks and stuff. Uh, collectively, as an offense, we had a really good practice yesterday. Um, if there was one downfall from last week on Thursday, I think it was Thursday, might have been Wednesday, too many balls were on the ground in some of our past game stuff. Um, and that wasn't necessarily the QB's fault all the time. Sometimes it was a drop. Sometimes it was a, it was a miss, uh, miss run route. But uh, yesterday was really sharp offensively. Um, not many balls on the ground. And, and um, it, was, it was a good day. So um, bouncing back. I don't think would be an issue for Adrian, honestly. I, I really don't because he's a, he's a really confident, mature kid. Uh, one question I've had uh, kind of been wondering about all season is Will Howard's in an interesting spot where, you know, Jake is the yep. backup in certain situations just because of the redshirt situation. Yep. But how does he prepare week to week? Is he still going into each game thinking he's the emergency starter? Yes, I think I think he is. Last week was an interesting, interesting week for Will because he missed some time for personal reasons, but he's back, and he was back late in the week last week, and I don't want to get into that, but everything's okay. Um, and so uh, we're going to give him uh, – more reps than we did last week, just simply because he missed a couple of practices last week. Um, but um, we, we've got great confidence in, in Will. I think the team does as well. And um, and, and Jake's continuing to improve. Um, and so, like I said, we'll, we'll keep – Adrian's going to be be the one, um, unquestioned one right now. But we'll always continue to distribute those reps between those other two guys as, as they improve because we also know – I I know for sure because I've in, in my last couple of years here we've always gone to the number two because of an injury. Brent Venables played at Kansas State yep. knows a heck of a lot about this school. Does that make it any harder going up against a coach who has that much familiarity with uh, the place? It might be harder for Brent. You know, uh, always was harder for me when I go against school that I that I that I went to. Um, I think there's some of those feelings like that, but it it doesn't matter. It's what happens on the field between the two teams and the players, and got a tremendous amount of respect for Brent. He's a phenomenal football coach, a great human being. I've I've had a chance to be around him um, a, a number of times, and. Um, uh, he's a great football coach, and, and uh, I think uh, it, it's a credit to him for waiting around for the right opportunity. You know, he had plenty of opportunities when he was at Clemson under Dabo, um, but he waited around for the right opportunity, and he's in a great situation. Coach, obviously it's a little different situation as opposed to 2020, but as far as the games go, going to Oklahoma after a disappointing loss, a lot of the same guys are still on the team. Do you think there's a, any sense of extra confidence or just feelings amongst the team? No, I, no, there's not enough guys from 2020. There's a handful for sure, but there's not enough. And that was such a, a strange year. I mean, there was nobody in the stands at all. And, and um, so, no, I mean, it. Uh, some of our guys just being there, I think, will help, but it's going to be a different crowd this year. And then as far as the offensive line goes, not a ton of rotation last week. Are you just kind of in that spot where you have your six or seven guys that you like? Uh, we need to rotate more. I talked to Coach Riley about that. We need to get some more guys in so that uh, we don't wear down on the O-line. Um, and uh, didn't do that last week, and it's something that uh, I know we need to do uh, and get, especially Carver. Carver needs to play. Carver's done some really good things. Uh, Dawson Del Forge, I think, needs to play a little bit. Uh, we got Liney in there, um, you know, and we we can be better up front. We missed some things up front that Riles and I both agree. And he asked Beebs and some of Duff and the guys that have been around that some stunts and things that uh, Tulane did that we didn't pick up. That um, we've got a season group there that I anticipate those guys seeing those things better and picking them up. I have is regarding Nate Matt, like we asked after the yeah. game. Any update on him? Um, didn't practice yesterday. Won't practice today. Um, so lower lower body injury. We have not ruled him out. The medical staff has not ruled him out for this week. So he's going through progression. I know he was running today, so that's positive. It's not like he's uh, in a boot and can't do anything. He is um, running today, but we are not practicing him today. Um, but uh, we're still hopeful. I know you have your captains, but uh, is there any couple of players that have been extra vocal this week and and trying to bounce back from that stuff? Um, just in general, all the time, Seth Porter is. Uh, not necessarily this week. Every week, Seth Porter is, and uh, Nick Allen really is. I mean, those two guys uh, have been uh, uh, tremendous leaders. Gilly has always been a tremendous leader for us. Um, you know, 
Echo, Julius have done a nice job. Josh has done a nice job. We've got a core group of guys that are on our leadership council that uh, uh, are, are not afraid to to step up and say something. Our, our captains are obviously really, really good. But we've got – that's a thing that, that I feel comfortable with. And I know we're going into a tough situation, guys, as far as coming off a loss and going against Oklahoma, who's a uh, terrific football team. Um, and we, we need to improve. We need to continue to get better and, and have an opportunity in the fourth quarter to win the game. Um, but I, I, I like the makeup of our guys uh, as far as maturity and as far as handling, um, you know, whether it's a letdown or, or handling situations. We've got a good group of seniors and good group of leaders. Just before fall camp when we talked, I remember safety was a question mark at that point. Does it feel pretty reassuring right now the way that they're playing? Yeah, um, we feel better. You know, we, we got some good snaps out of TJ last week. TJ missed some time. Um, and missed a game. Um, him playing has helped us. We've split the snaps between uh, Drake and um, Sincere. Sincere's been banged up, so he hasn't, uh, I don't think, played to the level of what I know Sincere can play. And part of that is, is he's been banged up. We need to try to get him continued healthy, but he's not out. Um, uh, Josh has been um, really, really good. And so Kobe's been good. Uh, and you know, we're continuing to work. VJ Payne's going to be a factor. I'm glad he got a chance to start that first game because uh, um, as the season progresses, he's, he's going to be a big factor for us. Has there been a past incident of a, a quarterback confidence that you've had to coach up that ability to fit it in the tight Well, I think you always, you always have that. Um, it, when you have somebody that's new to um, your program, new to uh, a system, it doesn't matter where – uh, I, I've been. It's it's um, um, having success in a situation, and and oftentimes, oftentimes it is a practice that leads to a game, and, and maybe this case it's got to be a game um, that leads to the next one in a game because uh, um, he's got a world of ability, and we all know it, and he knows it, and the players know it. So he just like I said, we just gotta um, you know. Trust in what we've seen uh, for the six and a half, seven plus weeks that we've watched it at practice, and uh, let it rip because uh, he's got the talent. And you mentioned O-line reps. Uh, wide receivers have seemed like they've been limited to the three starters. Yeah. Are you looking for more reps for more guys? Well, that was one of the philosophical changes that uh, Co uh, Coach Klein made um, that uh, I, I agreed with uh, when he asked about it and made it, and that you could go all the way back to bowl prep. Um, what had been in the past that CK asked me and said, here's what I'd like to do, um, and I'd like to make it an earned thing where I'm going to play the best guys unless they can't. And uh, I agreed um, with his uh, thought on that, and I uh, wanted him to take the reins. Uh, and we did a great job of that in the bowl game, and it, it was Landry, and Landry got hurt, so then Cade became the guy. So there's enough guys getting those reps, but the top three – um, are going to be the top three because they've proven week in and week out uh, of practice that they're the um, the best ones. And so those three kids, we have to con we've got to find ways to get the ball to those three guys. Um, Malik didn't get uh, enough touches in my mind. Philip didn't get enough touches. Cade got a few. Cade made plays when he had the opportunity. And so those three guys. Um, uh, along with Deuce, and especially we know how people are defending Deuce. We've got to find a way to get the ball to those three guys. Where's R.J. Garcia in terms of? He's probably rooms? the fourth or the fifth, um, and part of that is you look at the guys that are in front of. And R.J. is a really good player, and R.J. understands it. You look at the guys in front of him. There's a lot of snaps of experience of those guys in front of him. Looking back at the film offensively, what did you think of the blocking across the board? Wide receivers, tight ends, fullbacks. Just okay. Needs to be better. Yeah, you know, just we, we could have popped some things and maybe we didn't sustain a block. Uh, give them credit. They got off blocks and we did pop something. Maybe we didn't hold the block at a tight end or, or a wide receiver. It's just um, collectively, you, you ha we have to be better. We didn't have, when we're good, we're getting, you know, double digit explosive plays and, and we had three. And so we're not going to win very many games, not being explosive with our run game and our pass game. And, and uh, oftentimes, you guys know it's been it's been Deuce. Well, when they shut Deuce down, somebody we've got to push the ball downfield or get the ball in space to those three kids I mentioned so that they can make some things happen. And your thoughts on Dylan Gabriel? Uh, tremendous football player. Um, you know, 
watched their three games, um, followed him when he was at UCF, but watched the three games and uh, uh, very confident, very strong arm, very good athlete. He ran one for 60 plus yards, uh, I think, against Nebraska, and um, uh, he's a really good player. You haven't had him for the entire year because of injury, but how confident do you feel with, with Sean Robinson being gone with guys like Desmond Purnell on the on the two deep? You know, Des, is, Des has made that situation a lot better. And um, let me address Sean. Um, Sean was not kicked off this football team. Sean left for personal reasons that he needed to step away. I've got really good respect for that young man. And it was not a bad situation. I didn't want that to seem like on Saturday night because it just kind of blindsided me, and that's okay, that it was something that went wrong. Um, tremendous amount of respect for Sean. He stepped away, and I supported that him stepping away. He was not kicked off. He hasn't been with us for a while, so Dez has taken all those reps for the last three-plus weeks, and Dez has done a really nice job, and it's been a great spell um, for Khalid. And uh, um, Dez is one of our better special teams guys. He cares so much. He's a Kansas kid, wants to do great. He's just a redshirt freshman with a bright, bright future. But uh, I'm excited about Dez's progression. Chase Hageman with <clears throat> EMA Online. DJ Giggins was, he had 5.1 yards per carry on nine attempts. Can we maybe um, expect to? See him take on more responsibility in the rushing game. Yeah, hopefully um, we got to have the ball a little bit more, and we got to do something with the ball. So we're we're uh, um, you know getting some rhythm so that we can um, get guys in and out. He he had a lot of those reps when when Deuce was 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 out, but uh, you know that was the thing that was difficult for us in general offensively. We didn't have great rhythm, so it was hard for us to get sustained drives, and that's something that when we do do that, I'm hoping DJ does uh, become more a part of the offense. What situations do you think he'll strive in most? Um, just. Well, there's nothing the kid can't do. He catches the ball really well. He's a downhill runner. He's got speed on the edge. Um, he's a redshirt freshman as well that uh, didn't play last year. That's still learning, um, you know. And he's learning from the best in the country, uh, in my mind, in Deuce Vaughn. So um, we're excited about uh, where he's at and know he's going to continue to improve. Just back to that Sam linebacker. Do you need to see more out of Crew Jackson on special teams before he? Pro probably, more. but crew made a terrific play on kickoff, um, got off a block, uh, forced the guy out of bounds, made a big time play. Um, you know, crew's continuing to improve. We're just trying to flip him between Sam Backer and Will Backer. Um, and uh, he's uh, um, continuing to develop as a young player. But uh, I was excited for crew because he made a big time play on kickoff. Uh, you talked last week about defensively that you guys are doing some different things. Mm -hmm. Is the biggest thing just having more of a, the Sam linebacker, yeah. more of a, a linebacker? Yeah, we did sub it out a little bit on Saturday and, and moved Josh to that spot and had VJ come in to look to look a little bit more like what we did last year with Reggie. Um, but from a pass rush standpoint, from a run game standpoint, uh, you're better off having that bigger body in. And um, uh, to every, what everybody can see, we're, we're the most thin is at linebacker, and um, especially when Nate was healthy, where we were probably the best uh, depth-wise was at defensive end, so there was no reason to have Khalid be a rotate guy with Felix, Nate, pick, stuff, uh, Mott, and so we moved him and said, this is what we're going to do. And um, so that's been something where we've tried to make sure we keep Khalid in the game. Sometimes we, we blitzed him some. Josh Hayes is one of the best man coverage guys in the slot I've ever been around. That helps us. That's where we had Reggie last year. It helps us because Josh can do those things as the position that Reggie did. How do you feel like Khalid is, is adjusting to the full-time? You know, he, we all know he missed uh, most of fall camp. Um, so it's been a process. But from game one to game three, and I keep talking to him and asking, asking him, a, he's finally starting to feel stronger because you guys would know this better than I do. Um, been about exactly a year since he was hurt, you know, because it was uh, third, 
Yeah, um, it was Nevada, I thought. So it's been about a year, and that's typically what we've seen um, with that injury, that it's about a year. So he's feeling stronger, and I know he played better in week two than he did week one, better than week three and week two. You've spoken a lot in the last two availabilities about the need to overcome adversity. Adrian's obviously faced a lot of that. Can you explain how much confidence it gives you that he's going to be able to bounce back after a rough game? Just watching him. Just, um, you know, um, the way he carries himself, the way he works, the way he does things after practice, the way he um, communicates with Coach Klein, the offensive guys. Uh, once again, the guys played a lot of football. Um, he's had adversity playing the game. And... Uh, you know, he's in a new environment. Um, let's not forget he's replacing a guy that was a pretty dang good player in, in Skylar Thompson, and that's not probably the easiest thing to do. Um, and so uh, I want to let the kid breathe a little bit and uh, encourage him to cut it loose. But, um, you know, it, it's it's not the easiest situation to come into as well when you missed all the spring ball and, and uh, uh, got to replace a guy that uh, is on an on NFL roster that uh, was beloved here. I mean, the kid was a dude. And um, Sky is one of my favorite guys, and uh, he's proven it at, that, at that next level. So I want to give um, Adrian that that uh, um, belief for starters, and uh, because I've seen it, uh, CK uh, has seen it, the team has seen it, and um, I don't want to put so much added pressure on him. I think he already has had that at his previous place. Explain how the process goes of swinging back towards being able to cut it loose in a game-like situation and how that maybe is different than doing it in practice compared yeah, to Saturdays. Um, you know, just not not having that fear of failure. You, you, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you're not going to be perfect. Um, there's not one of us in anything that we do professionally or for an athlete that you're going to be perfect. And, um, um, you know, he's going to make some mistakes, and that's okay. And we got to – we got to let him be him and not uh, anything other than himself. And when he's himself, um, what we've seen, uh, he can be a really special talent. Let's let's uh, uh, push him to be that. How much differently have you seen Oklahoma playing on defense this season under a new coaching staff? <laughs> Quite a bit. I mean, there's a lot of different defenses in the three games that they played, and I think part of that is Brent trying to find out what his identity is. You know, what's his best personnel? It's hard to figure it out in the spring when you're just trying to learn people's names and then you get into fall camp and you're trying to incorporate your new guys and see what you have. Brent knows more defense than, than um, most everybody in the country um, because of, you know, just uh, his reputation and, and his resume. So I think he's trying to do uh, and put guys in different positions to see what they excel best in. He's also... Um, uh, understands that it's it's a young season, it's a long season, uh, that um, you want to make sure that you have a couple of different answers if something goes awry, whether that's an injury, uh, a performance or something. So we've seen a lot of different looks in three games, um, so we're not quite sure what we're going to get. Um, that doesn't surprise me just because I think he's trying to um, put his team in the best position moving forward. Coach, as far as the tight end position goes, two guys we've seen there for the most part are Ben Sennett and Sammy Wheeler. Yeah. Um, are their roles pretty interchangeable? Yeah, they do. They, they can play a lot of different things. Um, and, and Will Swanson's the third there, and I think we need to see Will a little bit more. It just depends on are we going to be in a two tight end set or one tight end set. If it's two tight ends, we need to see Will a little bit more. If it's one, then probably not as much. Those guys can split it. Um, and then... You know, just based on the the 21 personnel stuff, you know, Jax is back healthy now. Um, Christian's doing some good things. We don't have enough snaps based on the amount of personnel to the question that was asked a while ago of having the three wideouts in the game. Well, then you're only going to have one other guy other than the running back, and uh, we just got to pick and choose the times we use a fullback or a tight end. As the quarterback run game goes, we've seen Adrian, whenever mm -hmm. the, the, that is called, have some success. Is yeah. there any emphasis on maybe trying to get to that this week? Yeah, there there, ha there always is going to be um, with what we do. Um, it's been that way um, since uh, I arrived here. And Colin, obviously you guys know, uh, loves the run game with quarterback. Um, so it's, it's definitely a big part of our plan.